Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over Flexbox basics with three boxes. Okay, so I've got a page set up, and I want to experiment with CSS Flexbox. So just so we can kind of see what I've already got started, uh, the HTML is pretty simple, but pretty important. I have a div which is going to represent my Flexbox container. And when you're going to use Flexbox, it needs to be in a parent container for the boxes that are going to be manipulated. And then within that, I have three children. You can ignore the IDs and the spans. That's just uh, so that I can display the, uh, the widths here with uh, JavaScript. So I have three div children within my div flex container. Now you don't have to be using div, you could be using any other block element, but div is a good generic block element for this experiment. Okay, now I do already have some initial styling. My flex container just has some margin on it, nothing too fancy there. And the children within my flex container also have some styling, but once again, nothing functional for what we're doing. So let's get right into it. And the first thing I'm going to do is head over to my flex container and start to put in a few declarations critical to Flexbox. So the first thing I'm going to do, the most important, is display flex. So display flex tells the browser, hey, this container, this block, is going to be a flex container. As soon as I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and put in the flex direction. And for my direction, you can see right now my, my blocks, as blocks do, they're one on top of the other. I'm going to change my flex direction to row. I'm going to go ahead and save that and browser refresh. And of course, now I can see that those three are spaced uh, side by side. Speaking of spacing, I'm also going to put in the really good property, justify content. And I'm going to do space between. Save that. And we can see now my div children are spread apart by setting space between. Let's compare that really quick to space around and they are spaced, and now the space is around them, including on the far left and the far right. There's one I like too, space evenly, which I think works on most browsers, but it doesn't work on 100% of the browsers that I've seen, and there's also space evenly. I'm gonna go back to space between. Now, another good property to put in here, in addition to flex direction, I can put in flex wrap, and I'll just go ahead and choose the word wrap. Now, where that's going to come up is if my page starts to get narrow, then these children, these div children, will start to wrap versus I could put in the option no wrap. And now they will be they'll are forced to stay on that one row. For flex direction and flex wrap, you can actually combine that with the flex flow property. And then I can write in row wrap. Or I could put in in fact, let me save that there, refresh, that's exactly what we have. Or we could use column if we wanted to force those into the column orientation. So that's sufficient. And that is basically the declarations that I would use for my flex container. Display, flex flow, and justify content. There's a couple of others too, but that's a good start. I'm going to head down to the children here. Now I have a CSS rule set up for each child. Depending on what you're doing, you could, in theory, put a few flex declarations for all the children equally. I'm going to do them separately. So I'm going to go to flex child one, and what I want to control is the flex grow, the flex shrink, and the flex basis. I'm going to do that with one property, flex. So for child number one here, I'm going to do flex grow of one which is not the default, the default is zero. I'll do a flex shrink of zero, and I'm gonna do a flex basis of 100%. I'm gonna save that, and you're gonna see box number one stretch pretty large. And there we go, stretches all the way across. Now you see that I am getting a little bit of misalignment over here on the right side, and that's because of my five pixel margin on all sides. I'm gonna replace this 100% with a little calculation, calc 100%, minus 10 pixels, which is double my margin amount. I'll save that, refresh, and now my uh, first flex child aligns up nicely with the other two. Now I can do similar things with child number two. 
I'll do a flex of zero grow, zero shrink, and auto basis, no change. So instead of auto basis, which just keeps the setting, uh, the width of the default, I'll put in something specific like 250 pixels. And now we can see that this is grown to 250 pixels. It says 230 because that's the interior width. We have 10 pixel border on the left, 10 pixel border on the right. And I'll go to box number three. I'm going to do a flex grow of one, a flex shrink of zero, and a flex basis of auto. Now, box number three is going to stretch and fill up the space, mostly because of flex grow being set to one. And there we go. So now we have another container. And this is flexible in that I can move these around and boxes will stretch. If I got too narrow, they would start to wrap it in a different way. So you'd have to consider what you want to have happen there. And if I like that box three is filling up the space, then I could do something similar with box number two. A flex grow of one, a flex shrink of zero, and a flex basis of auto. And now both of those boxes will fill up the space equally. And if I have to wrap, well, no wrapping is necessary, but they'll still fit in there nicely and spread out as far as I needed. If I could go narrow enough, then you would see this all display into one column, which is pretty common if you wanted to make a mobile-friendly website. Okay, have fun with Flexbox.